so minutes. Do we need to do a roll? Call? Do we need to do a roll call because some of us are virtual? Uh, if we have to do any approvals, yeah. Okay. Which we do. Yeah. I did not hear what was yeah, the question. Yeah, just, we just needed to do a roll call. Okay. Um. Switched computer, so I don't have anything open on this one. Mm -hmm. So we have two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Seems like a long time ago. Yeah, it was a month ago. Let's see. I think in comment was spelled wrong, but other than that, it's our, unless you didn't mean in comment at the end of that paragraph. Uh, look it up. Who knows? In which one? The first one? It says in climate. So. Yeah, so definitely a problem. Yep. Dr. Um, on, on both me and Ms., the very last paragraph has me as Mrs. Oh, oh geez, really? See, I, I was not working hard. I, hard. That too, and I almost overlooked it. Oh, yeah, it's not Mrs. 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 Yeah. It's the very the motion to adjourn. Motion oh. because I copied it from the one before. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ms. Dwyer. Sorry about that. <laughs> Oopsie. I just changed you from one to the other, though, because from the two paragraphs ahead of it, you were still a mister. <laughs> Are you ready for a motion? Um, I can we can we do them both together, or do we need to do them separately? Well, she needs someone needs to make the motion first. Go ahead. I don't think you do both at the same time. Okay. Uh, I'll make uh, a motion to accept the minutes of um, our meetings on the <coughs> and November. 19th. As amended? As amended, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'll second it. Okay, so all in favor, Travis? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Estrita? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Rebecca? Was that a yes? What was that? Try me again. Okay. <laughs> You uh, sound like R2D to me. <laughs> uh, Linda? Yes. Uh, Lynn? And me? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, great. We have Tiffany Roberts here. Right. Um, it would be probably good if you guys introduced yourselves. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, I'm Denise Mallet from Berwick. Hi. And I'm, I don't know if you can see me from wherever the camera is, but way over here, I'm Travis, also from Berwick. I'm Travis. I'm from Lebanon. Hi. Hi, I'm Nancy Newbert, also from Lebanon. Sue Austin, you met me earlier, the assistant superintendent. And Audra Bove, the superintendent. I'm Amy Creighton, the director of nursing services. And then you guys online. Go for it. Linda, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm Linda Corliss. I'm also from Berwick. Stephanie Hagenboo, Lebanon. Uh, Astrida Schaefer, North Berwick. Rebecca Hopper, uh, North Berwick. Uh-oh. A little quiet. Then turn your volume. There you go. I think you're muted. She yeah. Can't. She muted herself. You're muted, Lynn. <laughs> And Tiffany, can you give us a little introduction um, of you? Absolutely. Um, so I'm representative Tiffany Roberts. I represent um, a little over 85% of North Berwick. Um, so that would put um, R260 as part of uh, my district. And then I have over 85% of South Berwick as well. Um, what I've found is my last term, I met um, 
with the superintendents and the town managers to see if there are any concerns, um, anything that I could possibly help with on the state level. Um, in specific, one of, for an example, um, I found out from the Marshwood superintendent uh, from Mary Nash at the time that the system administration funding had been drastically cut over the past year. So I worked with a colleague on education to um, get legislation passed to incrementally get that increased again over the biennium. So my thought this term was to broaden kind of my umbrella beyond just superintendents and town managers to select boards and town councils and school board members to see. And I may be putting some of you on the spot tonight. I don't wanna do that. Um, but if there are issues, if there are ideas that you have um, that I have absolutely an open door. Um, if there's things that you have tonight that you'd like to um, bring up, I'm here to listen to them. Um, you can also follow up with me via email or my cell phone. Um, I, I'm working from home, so it's, it's very open. Uh, we do have a deadline of the 18th to submit any legislation. So that's why I wanted to try to get in and meet with everyone, introduce myself before then. So if there were any needs or ideas that you may have that I can help with, that I'm able to, to do so. So that's basically what brings me here tonight. I want to thank you all for taking time in your agenda um, to squeeze me in. So I, I have a question. I'm, I'm very grateful that you reached out. I think it's mm -hmm. wonderful. I, I would love to see that from all of our local representatives. Um, do you have either um, any idea of other initiatives that are being brought forward for this year or things that were on the agenda for last year that maybe got kicked out? Um, is there anything, I guess, that's sort of already in the works that would be helpful for us to know about? So as far as this year, um, the way the system works is a little imperfect. Everybody puts in their legislation. You don't know what other people are putting in until it's already in. If I was to put in something identical to someone else, then they would just put us together as sponsors. But we really have no way of knowing until it goes to committee. Um, there were, you know, there were over 400 pieces of legislation that did not get addressed last session. I don't know what's being reintroduced and what's not. It really depends on if that person, um, you know, is still in the legislature or not. And of course, the biggest overarching theme we have here is, is the budget um, uh, shortfall that we're going to be facing. And so that's also something that we're taking into consideration when we're either submitting new or resubmitting legislation from last session is do we even have money for it? So that is kind of the the butt to all of this. Um, was there something um, in particular that you had in mind? Uh, no, I. I mean, I'm. I am just. I'm just sort of curious to know what else. Um, either what other districts are, you know, putting forward. What, um, you know, I. I think you guys would probably know more yeah. than we would. So um, I don't know if you have any. Thoughts. I mean, obviously, money is the big one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, just like you, Tiffany, we're dealing with the whole budget shortfall too, and concerned about that. So we get that 100 <laughs> percent. We do. Go ahead. Arthur. Well, I was just going to say some of our um, things that, that kind of hit the top of the list for us as concerns is tr student truancy, mm -hmm. and the kind of. Um, we do so much at the school and the district level, and then we kind of run out of options at that point. And um, it, it continues every single year at each grade level to be a, an issue that takes a great deal of time and thought. And um, there's not a lot of avenues to go after you've exhausted some of the school-based levels. Okay. Do you have... Are there models in place in other states that you have seen or there is there something that you've seen? Is there an idea that you have that like 
you'd like well, to see? Sometimes they, there's court involvement, yeah. Yeah. which can be punitive more than restorative or I, so. Yeah. New Hampshire does a pretty good job because they have the, the CHINS, which is Child in Need of Services, basically. Um, and they pro provide some backup in terms of through the, um, the criminal, you know, the juvenile criminal justice stuff. But we don't necessarily want to get kids involved necessarily in that path, but there's nothing, like there's nothing that forces parents really, particularly at the, the elementary level, to get their kids to school here, um, except for DHS reports, you know, that kind of thing. High school's harder. I mean, it's hard for parents to get their teens <clears throat> here sometimes too. And so there's, there's another whole, it's, it's just hard. It's just a really hard topic. And uh, we do a lot of work and then it, there's not much to do beyond it. And then honestly, some of it is it's punitive to us. Right. As a, our, if we're missing kids and we have um, absenteeism and our, the absenteeism is a little bit high and part of it is because we can't get the kids here, it, 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 it impacts us in terms of our state reports and stuff. So, yeah. Now, are you, are you seeing an increase in this with, uh, now you, with the hybrid or remote yeah. learning or anything like that? <laughs> Yeah. We're seeing it partly because of we've had to quarantine some classes and some, you know, like a team. And then that is a huge impact to their attendance as, you know, for some of them. Um, but this isn't, this isn't specific no, to this. No. This has been an ongoing issue right. for 25 years. You know, this is yeah. not something that's new. Do you feel like it's getting worse, like this year aside? What's the trend? I think the trend that I, I've seen over time is that it starts really young. Mm -hmm. Like before we weren't really seeing it as much in kindergarten, first grade, yeah. but like even right now in kindergarten, uh, there, there historically has been some real truancy issues even at the kindergarten level. So that was, that had been a shift. Yeah. Um, Do we okay. have a truant, truant officer anymore? We don't. And I mean, that's something that we really should be thinking about. We talked about it actually yeah. just recently to okay. say what did that what did that person do? Well, I mean, I've been we haven't had a truancy officer really ever right. in the years oh, that really? we've been here. No, um, some school systems do have yeah. them. Yeah. It's been primarily we've utilized yeah. the administrators' guidance and our SROs really are the folks that mm -hmm. go out and and do home do visits. the work. Yeah. You know, do the work. Yeah. So it is home visits. Mm -hmm. Like they're really yeah mm -hmm. yeah if yeah if it's safe yeah. Yeah. So you would like to see something from this, some support from the state? I think so. Yes. I think we, like I said, we're really limited with what we can do as a yeah. school district. Mm -hmm. And kind of after our options, we don't have any other, anything mm -hmm. else to tap. Yeah. So it okay. help with not penalizing us for them. That would be a big help. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not that we don't want to be no. responsible for that. But there's some pieces of it that are pretty, pretty difficult. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm taking notes. I'm listening. I'm just writing too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good. Interesting. Um, I will. Again, a lot of times, like someone had just mentioned, I can't really see the room that great. Um, other looking at other states to see what they're doing, um, and sometimes even looking at other districts um, may help too. So. Um, this is something I will look into um, and see. So when you say being uh, being penalized, what is that affecting? Sometimes it affects, um, for example, we've had the state testing and one of the categories they look at is student attendance. And when you've worked really hard as a school to make sure that you have families in and then if they're absent for the state testing we could have to go on into an improvement plan um because of that that one party. category even though we've worked exhaustively to get that student or students in um so that has repercussions for the amount of time that it takes to develop a plan and work through a plan and how many teachers and classrooms and staff are impacted by the plan. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example of, of that. Okay. Okay. So I will, I will look into this and then 
Um, Audra, I'll circle back with you and see, is, does that sound like a plan in the next week, week or so and see what I can come up with and um, if there's anything we can do there. Great. Didn't Steve work on one a couple of years ago? He did. Bill? Yeah. But it, it, did it didn't pass. It didn't pass. So uh, no, I mean, because he was looking for more. Right now there's a, I think there's like a $200 fine. Is that what it is for parents? Um, but it's very rarely ever enforced. Um, yeah. Okay. It is I have a quick enormous question. enormous amount of work to get that oh, place. Sure. Yes. It's enormous. It's right. crazy. Yeah. Who had a question? Sorry. I, I have just a quick question. Um, Tiffany, you mentioned in your last term, you had your, your other like Can you even hear me that I sound? You're in, in and out a little, a little bit. bit. You just have a little bit. Um, I'm just wondering who you worked with and if Beth O'Connor worked with you at all. Um, she, from other districts. She did not. Um, on specifically the system administration funding, um, Bill, I worked with Representative McCray of Fort Fairfield, who's a former teacher, and on the education committee. So it, I find it's it's best to um, I'd like to collaborate with this, you know, local representatives as well. Um, for instance, with that one, uh, Representative Meyer from Elliott, who has the other little chunk of South Berwick and Elliott, sign on to that with me. But I did the legwork with someone on the education committee. Um, and it, it actually served out, served very well for them to see, you know, North and South coming together with the same issue. Um, and it kind of pushed I'm just, their- I'm just wondering why um, all the representatives from all the districts in MSAD 60 aren't all ganging together to work for education funding. It, I don't think they all are. That's my point. I, I would agree with that, Rebecca. I think that's a, I think that's a fair question. I, I wish that I could speak um, for the other representatives. I, 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 um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, we've got what, uh, uh, Lebanon is Representative Kryzak, right? Yes, yes. Um, I can I can touch base with him. He and I were on the same, we're on the agriculture committee together. Um, as far as working together, sometimes it's just a matter of not, you know, touching base, not being in the same place at the same time. You know, um, are there concerns that you've reached out and haven't gotten a response or? No, my concern is that they do not value public education, some of the elected representatives, and that the voters should know that, that may be watching this um, or, you know, attending this meeting. That necessarily is the case that they don't care about public education. I, I, I wouldn't say that. I disagree with that. You know what, I, I would love to have an opportunity to have other the other representatives come to sit in on a board meeting and then yeah. we can hear what their priorities are. I think that's probably the. Right now, this is like I said, this is again, solely just my approach to legis being a legislator is to go to the communities, to the schools, to the, to the select boards and, and councils. This is just how I see I can best serve my district. Um, every legislator has their own way of, of going about how, you know, how they serve the district. This was just my way of reaching out. So as a board or administration, are there any other issues that we want to have Tiffany kind of focus on? I think the biggest one that we always keep getting a burden of is the unfunded legislations that come through. So yeah, I have to really watch the unfunded legislation so that we don't keep getting handcuffed by them. You kind of broke up there. You said the unfunded. I was just talking about how um, one of our biggest problems we always run into, especially during budget season, 
is all the unfunded <laughs> that get approved and sent down our down the pipeline and then end up handcuffing us and make it harder for us to be able to do our job. Um, so I, you know, I, uh, not supporting those un unfunded legislations would be awesome because they do hurt us drastically. Right. A lot of the, lot of the special education rules and regulations, especially, are very costly. And, and yeah. And, and we did, um, uh, she's a senator now, but re at the time, Representative Cornfield, who was chair of the education um, committee did make it clear to us that the, you know the more mandates we add on that are unfunded the more it takes away from our districts and their ability to fun function that that was made clear to me as a freshman legislator last term so that concern is 100 percent heard and like i said if things could come up or you have other ideas um, my email's on the state website my cell phone's on there as well um, I'm sure you didn't come here with a list of things and ideas right at the top of your head. Um, but that might not mean tomorrow you wake up and think, you know what, what about this? Or this state's doing that, or we really need to tackle this problem. Just reach out at any time. And, um, and then we can have a discussion and see what we can do. Tiffany, after the 18th or whatever the date was, um, once all of these have been submitted, maybe, or at some point, if you could just circle back with us and if there's one place that they're listed, basically it would be interesting for us to see education related initiatives um, or legislation and then we can sort of follow them. Yep. So everything, everything will get submitted on the 18th. Then it'll take some time after that for it to get um, referenced out to committees for us to be able to pull a list of what bills are going to education. So it'll be, it'll be uh, after that, it'll probably be after the new year. Sure. Okay. Does anybody have anything else for Tiffany? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having me. It was nice to meet you all. Nice, nice to meet you. Bye. Um, Bye. Okay, donations for the backpack program? Sure. So we have, we love this. Yes, so APXNet has donated $1,000. Um, from my understanding is every year or a couple times a year, the company um, employees have some input on where donations or their um, donations will go to. And this time around, it was to the backpack program. Uh, they're out of Berwick. And then the West Lebanon Communities Ladies Circle mm -hmm. has donated $612. Um, they had um, a, a project called Empty Bowl, which it is somewhat around here. We've done that a couple of times. And how they framed it this time was empty, empty bowls because they weren't putting soup in the <laughs> yeah. bowls. Um, so it's it's they have a pottery bo a bowl, a, a clay bowl. Mm -hmm. And then they, um, so people can go and purchase this at a donation. And this time they were able to have a recipe instead of a bowl of soup. So they had a recipe for soup. Um, so half of their proceeds went to our um, backpack program. So $612. And what does APXNet do? I think it's a digital, digital. It's a networking program. Yeah. And they're out of Berwick? Yes. So and that was 800? No, 1,000 to 1,000. Nice. Okay, very nice. So do we need a motion to yes. accept yeah. those? Yep. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll make a motion to accept that donation. I'll second it. Sorry. <laughs> like, anybody? I'll <laughs> second it. <laughs> um, all right, all favor, Travis? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Estrita? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Linda? Yes. Lynn? I saw a yes on that one. And the <laughs> yes. Matt said yes. <laughs> Cat said yes. Um, all right. COVID protocol update. 
All right, so our goals for tonight, for this topic, we have two, two goals on this topic. Uh, the, first one, yeah. the first one is we just want to walk through what it's like when we have a presumed positive case or a confirmed positive case. So we just want to go through that process with everybody so that there's an understanding of the kind of coordination that takes from the building level, the parent level, to the district level. But the other important piece that we want to talk about tonight as well is just give a status of where we're at with what we know of in the district um, and talk about um, a couple of different things as far as, um, you know, your thoughts about where, we, where we're at and where we're moving to and how we're going and also the, you know, the break coming up for um, the December break coming up and looking past that a little bit. So it's it's a two pronged conversation. Um, right. So and I think like two weeks ago when we decided to put this on the agenda it was more of like a informative, like this is what we do. This is what our experience is with this process. And then, of course, with the way things have been going, we're like, we're probably already going to need to talk about these other things. It's an action. We can will here, CDC. We could do this. Yeah, oh, my gosh. So um, I think I'll start with. Um, Does everybody know Amy? Um, yeah. I, I've <laughs> been. We met you. Yes, on the there. And then I think I was here mm -hmm. once over the summer. Um, so I remember one summer morning, actually close to September, and the email came and it was this standard operating procedure. And I was like, wow, I really need to read this. And so it's because they were, they're on their second edition. This one came out the end of September and then they're reviewing it and a new one should be put out with different wording and what spots, I'm not quite sure. Um, so this is like my playbook. I bring it everywhere I go. Most of it's in here now, but um, I think how I thought the process was going to go when we would get a case morphed into how it's really going now. <laughs> I thought we were going to be let, like our hand was going to be held by this magical CDC angel that came and that we quickly learned that that was not the case. So how it's going is typically we get a phone call from a parent or a staff member um, saying that they've tested positive or my child's tested positive. Hold on one second, Amy. Can you guys hear okay out there in internet land? All right, excellent. Okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure. So then how it was supposed to go is we call it into the CDC. I gave a name, a date of birth, and they say, Yes, it's confirmed. We have it on our end. And then uh, we get led to identifying close contacts. Um, we quickly learned that calling the case into the CDC, getting a confirmation is not a quick process. All right, so can you do that to do your magic? Uh, yep, hold on. Uh -oh. So actually, while they do that, I have a question. When you said, um, are you guys doing the collecting the close contact yeah. data and then reporting that back yeah. to the CDC? Yeah. Okay. So how do they define close contact? Like <laughs> family members in the house? We people you've been we in. only worry about what's in our building. Oh okay. Okay. So or the bus. Or the bus. Yeah. Um or probably a sports team. We haven't had to go there yet. Um so Household contacts, daycare contacts, we wouldn't be. They're doing all that. They, okay. Yeah, that would, yeah. <laughs> they should be doing all that. Yes. Just to leave it. So going back, um, like I said, getting a confirmation from the CDC is not a quick process, and we would be waiting until after the school. Like we, our goal is to get the kids that we know need to go home, get them home before the end of the day. We don't really want to put them on the bus. Um, so time is of essence. Um, it's great when we get a call at 8, 9, 10 in the morning, 1.30 in the afternoon, not so great because we did that once and we were really under the gun. Yeah. So what we've morphed into now and what is now kind of the standard statewide is if I get a call from a parent, my child tested positive, 
I asked them, can you get me a screenshot of the results or a paper copy of the results? If I am able to interpret that lab as a positive case, we move. Yeah. And so then what that looks like mm. is I trot down to their office. We are immediately on a Google Meets with the, that school principal, that school nurse. We collaborate and talk about what classroom this child or teacher belong to, how many students that involves. There's a chart that needs to be filled out with each individual's name, date of birth, um, parents' name, best phone number, email address. They've now added additional information that not, needs to be on their um, preferred language. Do they need an interpreter? And um, there's a column that we navigate and check off if we've made contact with the family. So once that list is made, we also talk, does the child ride the bus? Do we need to go there? And we is there who's been in the room? Is, the specialist is there a in the specialist and art teacher going in the room? We have sign up sheets on each classroom door or even like the library door. If a <coughs> staff member is to enter a room for greater than 15 minutes, they're supposed to sign in, sign out. We try to pull that paper and then that school administrator and the nurse usually tag team and call each one of those parents, explain the situation. We've had a, an individual's tested positive in your child's classroom. We're asking you to come pick your child up as soon as they, you can. And we give, also give them a follow-up email with written information as to what quarantine and isolation mean. We talk them through it over the phone and they get the close contact letter from Audra. Mm -hmm. And we tell them the CDC will also be following up with you, which as we know, may or may not be happening anymore. Yeah. So we legitimately are the educators and giving all the information, the contact tracers, we're doing it all. Which I never thought that that would be where we're at, but that's where we're at. Yeah. So yeah. So for each and person, you're talking hours and hours. Hours and hours. Yeah. Yeah. So the quickest we've gotten it down to is probably about a two, two and a half hour, yeah. like us brains working. And that was a quick one. Yeah. The and first ones were a lot. <laughs> yeah, they were a lot longer as we were trying to just yeah. navigate it all, and also waiting. Like we, we oh, originally yeah. we waited yeah. to hear from the CDC, CDC about stuff, and, and we're not anymore. And now we're just and as long as we have that yeah. information, we just go with it. So what I've learned this week so far is that doctors' offices are calling folks and saying you tested positive, and then when the parent is asking for the proof, like the they're like, we, we're going to put it in the mail. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be our next hurdle with taking the parent's word for it, which 99% of the time, like we feel comfortable with that. Um, I have had one instance where even the parent had the paper and misread it and it was, yeah. So in that case, what I feel comfortable with is telling calling the parent, doing what we do, mm -hmm. but stating in the letter and staying in our um, our verbal instructions is we've been informed of a positive case. We haven't gotten, we haven't been able to confirm that, but to be cautious, we'd like to send your child home, move to remote learning, the whole thing. For the whole co cohort? But, yeah, just like we would if it was a real positive, but um, with the understanding that if we in fact do find it was a false positive or really wasn't positive, we'll move you back quicker. Yeah. Just to be safe. Yeah. It will be an emotional roller coaster for everybody, but we'd rather be safe than we're all kind of used to the emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think it's dull. Yeah. yeah. Um and then really the administrators and the teachers and what they do to shift gears in a short amount of time has really been amazing. And with each case that we've moved remote and all the kids and teachers who have gotten tested because of an exposure, we haven't had a second positive come back. So um, what we're doing is really working. Hmm. Um, 
Yes, you know, last week, even, you know, Dr. Shaw was talking about how, you know, there's a statement from Dartmouth and such saying that school is looking right now as the safest place for kids to be versus other mm -hmm. alternatives in the community. That could change like everything with this, but that was the latest. Is the change in recommended quarantine time going to have an impact on us? From I'm glad you asked. So, the like you mentioned, the federal guidelines are shifting towards the seven or ten day quarantine versus the fourteen. Um, Maine is reviewing those, but have not adopted them yet. They may. It just, so if they do, if I assume if they don't adopt and nothing will change, right. if There's, they do adopt, what what impact will that have? It would shorten our amount of time that I think we would need to move to remote. So it would be a ten day quarantine if the close contacts do not test and it would be seven if they did test and tested negative. Okay. Still testing between five and seven days. So say you test on day six, I feel like you still aren't going to get results before that seventh day. So, so you might, it might have an impact for people that get tested um, as a precaution because they found out they came in contact, but aren't, like, I don't know. I mean, it sounds right. like you guys will have some guidelines. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll be updated in the SOP, whatever they move towards. Okay. So the level of, just the level that each building has, every, there's assigned seats in every lunch so that we know where children are sitting if there's an issue. Mm -hmm. There's the paper at the doorways that we collect to see which staff members have been in and out of a room. There's just yeah, the, so, the level of detail. Oh, it's is, incredible. It's like incredible. every case, and, and there's different levels of people who I communicate with at the CDC. There's the contact tracers who are the ones making all those, you know, the phone calls. The case investigators are like the higher level epidemio, like the, they've got their MPH degree and they're like, they really know that. And so they're like, wow, you guys really know what you, you've got. You seem to have this down. I'm like, yeah, well, it's not our first rodeo and we're doing pretty good. Um, but like, for instance, with the cafeteria setting, like we haven't had to quarantine anyone from a lunch setting because I explain we've got individual seating desks, six feet apart, forward facing. So if we were at a table, it would be a different story because mm -hmm. we're not forward facing. Um, we really did a great job from the beginning. From what I understand, from what I hear, um, the vast community feedback from our district is that you guys are doing a great job, an amazing job, phenomenal job. Yeah. <laughs> and that it seems whatever your protocol is seems to be working. It is. So I think the hard thing is that we we made a very conscious decision to notify the community of every single piece that we know. And I think that can be like, you know, that that overload of, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, but it's so- Or do they just important. stop reading them? <laughs> well, that's, it. That's, it. that's a concern as well, yeah. because, you know- We that's want them to read them. Because yeah. there may be different pieces in some of those letters that, yeah. are dif that differ because the situation is different. Right. So um, I think you're doing the right thing. Yeah, um, I would think the parents who, as a thinking mm -hmm. of myself as a parent, I would find that very reassuring to know that you were taking the you know, these steps and being that deliberate about it. Yeah, because you know, a lot of parents, I think, kind of yeah. about sending their kids yeah. back to school and yeah. you know seeing this, I would think that right. Make more want to come back. I guess. Yeah. I well, it's you know it's hard. I mean, people are struggling all over the place. Yeah. So. But just sending out the most recent letter that we did yesterday, yesterday mm -hmm. with five, basically three confirmed and two probable. Waiting, yeah. Um, that was a lot to like. We we're like, I'm just like. But if you yeah, actually read it all the yeah, way, that is what it is. But if you read it all the way through, you would find right. out that actually nobody. It right. was right. right. Exactly. Like, yeah. But it still right. just it adds to our own mm -hmm. dashboard right. and all that right. kind of stuff. But like for today, there was, the we did school. get one more positive case at the high school. Same situation. Wasn't in the building while they were infectious, so we didn't have to do close contact tracing. Do you think that there's? Are you? 
um, considering leaning towards maybe only sending out communication for ones that were in the building or maybe like well it's on the dashboard at the state level right if we like even though it's a, even though these children weren't necessarily in school they still are sort of attached yeah. to us so if we don't if someone is looking at the state site and we're not sharing all the information i, I think your communication's right. fine i don't yeah you know yeah. I don't think it's any, mm -hmm. it's not any more dramatic than the daily headlines. So, yeah, yeah it's true. Right, you're not sharing private information. No, it's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, whatever. Yeah. Right. Like, just yeah. the numbers are there. Um, and sometimes as, we do have to be a little more general. Like, if it's somebody. I noticed how the wording yeah. sounds. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed so so like, how can we be as specific as possible yeah. without blowing right. our cover? Right. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, if it's somebody that has traveled between yeah. different schools, we, mm -hmm. yeah. if it's identifiable, we try not yeah, to. Yeah. One time we did list a class um, by name, oh, but that cool. was that was intentional because there had been another issue in that school. So it was mm -hmm. yeah. at that point we felt yeah. it was necessary for that class to be just yeah. to assist parents feeling reassured that we were, you know, cognizant of the differences. Yeah. As we head into the winter, do you? I know you're waiting. You'll on. 2.0 from the CDC or mm -hmm. whatever you were, you know, Reaper. provisions you're calling yeah. that. Do you um, would do you feel like we need to make any revisions, sort of as a district, to the way we're operating? Aside from something that the like, are you happy with the way it's going? Safety or would, protocol wise. Yeah, like, are you? Would are there anything changes that you feel like we should be looking at? Um, I don't think so. I, the only thing I think I'd like to touch on is how the pause before Thanksgiving really helped Great. us to not have to contact trace and call folks on Thanksgiving. I received a call on Thanksgiving, which was fine about a positive case. But because of that buffer, we didn't have to act on it. Um, I, and even this week, um, getting to tomorrow, I knew we would get to tomorrow. Um, these six cases that quickly accumulated and we still didn't have to contact Trace on, that is going to not be the case very soon. Yeah. So. Um, so, managing one case in a day was okay for us. <clears throat> Two, three, four will take up our whole day, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But our other work will take a break. And I just, and then at what point we need to weigh how many classes do we move remote before building um, staffing is an issue and it can't run that way. Uh, but I, like I said, the, the Thanksgiving break that we had was um, a very good buffer. So let's just say wild and crazy, we make it through half of December, like, you know, whatever, we probably know that we won't, but let's just say we did. Are you recommending that we would maybe go remote earlier than our nor than like before Christmas, like do the same thing. We we have talked about that because I mean if we are yeah. even making it that far. If if we were able to have that buffer again, if we had to contact families the closer to the Christmas holiday, maybe harder to even get yeah. get people. And if they are if they're socializing or seeing family, then if they don't know that and they're yeah. That's the big concern. That's the big concern. Kids that might have been exposed and then they're going to be right into the middle of the holidays well, and, exposing and it other, to other folks. Right. The yeah. other thing is we won't know for seven to ten days from Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. You know what I, mean? I just, like, yeah. yeah we're, we're expecting something right. next week. I feel like we're we're we've, I've been yeah. bracing for impact for yeah. next week, yeah. pretty yeah. much is the best way I can describe it. Because there's a lot. Um, we have, you know, I think, and Audra has some numbers about staff that are, or, or families that are sort of hanging out doing a quarantine right now because they were theoretically mm -hmm. exposed over Thanksgiving. And it, or, traveled or traveled to a non yeah. Uh, yeah. non approved state. <laughs> Is there is there any merit to being a 
being proactive on this? I mean, we know it's coming. Uh, in North Berwick, we didn't have mail for the past couple of days because all of the carriers <laughs> called in sick and, oh. and the postmaster himself was out there doing what deliveries he could. Um, finally got mail today. Um, I mean, it's coming. We know it. Yeah. Is there any so, merit to to like saying, okay, guys, Friday, we're go home getting ready to, because we know it is coming. I mean, I, I understand that keeping things rolling for as long as possible is key too for other reasons and, and the system works beautifully, but there's no question that we're going to go over the cliff at some point. And then I guess my question sort of on top of that is we discussed this a few weeks ago, but if our, if we do have to make that switch to remote, are we making that decision to go through the holidays and till halfway into like, what are we, I, I feel like, I feel like we need to know that if come Monday we have to switch to remote, that we've got a plan in place. Is it just for a week? Is it two weeks? Are we gonna, or are we just going all the way through? Well, I think that's the con. Yeah. That's the next that's part the, of this conversation. Thing, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. clearly, if we had to go remote any time between now and Christmas, I would say we would go. But then the next part of it is it how much further past right. when we're supposed to return do we actually return? A week, two weeks, past the holidays. That's. Another conversation. I, I really struggle with uh, the emotional welfare and the psychological welfare of the kids. I think it's very, very difficult for them, especially the high school age kids. I think we're going to see a rise in rates of kids hurting themselves because they, they aren't, this is their life. Their friends are their life when they're in high school. And I know it's important, but to try to um, not expose kids, but the amount of children that come down with COVID is minute. And I think really we, we, we're hurting, we're hurting school-age kids dramatically the more we keep them out of school. And not only that, it's, it's so difficult for the parents when the kids are home and they're trying to work and it just becomes even if it's not a super duper home life to begin with, the kids are home, it, it's just, a, we're creating other problems for families too. And if they're saying right now that school is the safest place for, for students to be at, I think we really have to take a really long hard look at how we can keep them here for as long as we possibly can. And I know that's what you're trying to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I, I really think sometimes the emotional well-being of, of the kids is kind of getting lost over the um, the disease itself. Well, and there's and we totally get that, Joanne. I mean, we're, we that's I think why we're still where we are and why yeah. we're still pushing forward. There's some practical pieces though that really that do sort of or or could hard tie us at some point, like absences of staff. Yeah. The, the the lack of substitutes, the whole nine yards that go with that, and um, or having a building that's got like if the outbreaks and you know peace mm -hmm. comes up again and again we're not feeling like kids aren't contracting it at school no it's just that it's it's being it's the rules of the yeah it's the rules that we have to follow how yeah. many cases yeah. you have to do this how many cases you yeah. have to do that yeah. um sure. the noble high school outbreak was set to close on 12 1 and because of the two additional cases it's reopened we don't have to close because thankfully the kids weren't there during their infectious period. However, they still count against the school because two weeks prior is considered their exposure period. And that was two weeks, they were here. Mm -hmm. uh, so. So I guess my, my question is, and now I'm dealing with it from the emergency side of it. Yeah. Right, but from the school, I have completely different what it seems to be completely different definition from CDC on what a close contact is and what an exposure is versus what they are saying in school. Like to me, from what I've been told and what we've been working with on a daily basis and what we've got for our playbook from, from the emergency side of it is if I come in contact with a positive person and I'm wearing my safety precautions, my mask, my glasses, my 
all, all my crap that I gotta wear, <laughs> and the patient's wearing a mask, we're not in exposure. Our students are all wearing a mask mm -hmm. most of the time. I yep. assume the whole time, but I know there are certain times where they are not. Um, so are they legit, really, according to the CDC, are they exposures if uh, we got masks on? Yep, the time? absolutely. In, our, in the standard operating procedure here, um, a case within a classroom, the whole entire classroom needs to move to remote learning. They're considered close contacts. They need to quarantine for the 14 days. That's an annoying part of this. That's what I, yeah. yeah. So until the rules of the game change and change to a different quarantine time or lessen the amount of folks involved, we could have a better chance of having a quicker turnaround time than what we have right now. I mean, they're even putting out your actual exposure is you have to be within six feet of somebody more than like with, 15 minutes. for 15 minutes within a 24 hour period. It's, yeah. mm -hmm. So it's added amongst the whole 24 hour period yeah. without, without a mask. Yeah. The rules for the school. Our don't have, ma are, are have masks right. on, so they're not. Yeah. The they rules they made for the school it. are a completely specialized set of rules, just like the ones that you have or that hospital employees are following. It's completely different. I think Do you, I, that's, I agree that's with, appropriately frustrating. It, it is. It's very, it's very <laughs> right. annoying. And I mean, like I said, I'm seeing it from both sides, and yeah. it's just like this is absurd. You've got this hand telling us this thing, and you got this hand telling you this thing. Mm -hmm. But I agree with Joanne. I think you know the the CDC has come out and said that the schools are the safest place for our students to be, and I and more than just the COVID aspect of it, but for the emotional side mm -hmm. of it. I think. We should be trying our hardest, and I know you guys are, to keep our kids in school all the time, every single day. I mean, it's got to be an extreme possible or extreme instinct when we have to shut down, in my opinion. Um, and I think we, and you've got to factor in, we as a board have to factor in the whole staffing aspect is, is an important feature that we don't usually see. But I, I mean, I, I think we got to keep our kids going in school. I think they need it. I think and families need it, parents need it. Everybody needs to be in school, and it's also the safest place. And the percentage is so small on what it affects for the kids mm -hmm. for a, a the, you know a danger rate. And we're from what I understand, the, we're really not seeing transmission in the school. Correct. It's all coming from outside. Correct. So James trying to yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying. I I mean I agree with what everyone's been saying, but I also think that like for us, not getting the mail today because all of the mail carriers were out sick that's going to start happening in the schools too. So there's going to be this moment where the staffing isn't going to be able to keep up with the situation on the ground. Not that the kids are necessarily going to be sick, but that the staff is going to be impacted because the teachers are in the world more than the students are. I mean, they've got to go to the grocery store, what have you. Um, the, even if the school succeeds in having very tightly controlled pods that's not the way the world works so everyone's coming in with a lot more exposure than we would like because mom goes to work and what's their situation you know is someone in the office not wanting to wear a mask or what have you we don't know that so i'm amazed at how well it's all been working kudos hats off this has been a fantastic semester so far with regard to this plan um but just as the general numbers rise in our community around us, there's going to come a point where it's going to overwhelm the school as well. And, and more from the staffing viewpoint, I think, than from, from children being sick. And it's just a question of, you know, we're in the, the beginnings of the post Thanksgiving peak. We know it's coming. Um, I don't know if you guys all saw the, the data out of Canada when they had their Thanksgiving, October 12th. The spike was insane afterwards within the two weeks. And and CDC staff here have also said that's we're it's coming. So we know it's coming. It's it's not something anybody wants, but the fact is it's on its way. And then just as it begins to slow down, we're going to hit the Christmas wave. So I don't know if we can help. I mean, we have three weeks between now and Christmas, the break. Um, is that what it is? Yeah, just about. Can you have Jeff? No, we have three weeks. Yeah, I can't hear her. I'm a sweetheart. I'm really excited to hear her. All right. I'm just, you know, if we get through this week, great. But I think we need to be prepared for the school to close down because of staffing issues. 
So, okay, so we, we have two and a half weeks, right? Or whatever, something like that. Um, I, I mean, my, I would like to see, I'd like to see us follow our plan and follow the numbers as long as possible. And if I, I you know, I can see the benefit of maybe closing a few days before Christmas to, for the reasons that it was helpful at Thanksgiving. Um, I mean, I, my... What's our school calendar already in say? I, I'm guessing that, that we, we must, are, we're in probably till the 22nd. We're in till the 18th. Yeah. We're in, yeah. We're yes. in till the 22nd. 22nd, yeah. So say we were remote, say we were remote for 21 and 22. I don't know. We don't, I mean, I, I my thought is, that's a real stick idea. with stick that's with the numbers. That. What's that? That's what we were thinking. I was trying to get yeah. to the 18th. I think yep. we, if I we would can love get us to the 8th or I'm not you guys, but if we right. can get ourselves to the 18th, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? I think. Is that the Wednesday? That's no, that's Friday. the Friday. That's that would Friday. be two weeks from tomorrow. And, you 18th. know, by having the cohorts go remote if needed. And if, you know. As long as we have staff. As long as we have right. staff. Because so <laughs> when, when you get that point, you right. have a choice. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, as long as, you know, the CDC will come in and say if we have an outbreak. Yeah. Right? They will they do will. their research and we'll know. Right. And they will instruct if we should close or not. Some. They, they, they do really say a lot. They're, they're, they do say a lot. It's it, Anything is always up to the superintendent. The superintendent can close at any time. Um, I the do. superintendent can't keep it open longer than they No. Would. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> We're just going to muscle through. Right. <laughs> they haven't been super like, you must. Yeah, there's a lot of local. There's a lot of really? pushback. They, they would yeah. get if they yeah. started yeah. back. Yeah. There's a lot of political. Oh, I, oh, I know. So I I, the goal being, well, you know, make it as far as we can the 18th this day, but keeping in mind that the cases coming in mm -hmm. rapid fire soon mm -hmm. might shift a lot of people remote and at what point at that point building level functioning wise would it even be sustainable would right. be right. and then i want the, the, and we know that it would be easier at the middle and high school right and harder at the younger to do like right. is that correct so say then this is another layer to think about too a possibility is um two three of our schools can't function the whole school needs to go remote at what point do you say the whole district should go for family wise planning wise does that take effect or do you leave one school standing i, I mean that's my vote is to keep going I, I as long as we can especially if um especially if there is more flexibility at the upper levels and they also have less in class exposure i, I you know if it were i mean that's that's just my opinion i, I there becomes a logistical mm -hmm. issue where we can't do that and if we get to the point where we we say as a district we can't do this. There's too much, you know, two schools are closed Two, whatever. Like if we, if we decide that we cannot do that, then that's, then that's our decision. But I, I do, I personally feel like if we can, if, if you know, we've have these sort of cohorts, smaller, these rings that we've set up and if we can try to, you know, I guess utilize them, but that's I'm just one I'm just one opinion. I think I think we I agree. I think we need to try and keep them in as long as possible. I think the biggest thing that's going to hold us back is staffing. Right? Yeah. If we get to a point where we can't staff, then we have to shut down. But I personally think we can shut down schools versus the whole district over certain things. But it's that it's the overall it's the staffing aspect. If we can't keep our staffing in which of those are the people that are going to be affected more than I think our students are going to be affected. Um, that's kind of that factor that we have to weigh. But I, I'd like to see us try and make it to the 18th, but that is not just on us. That's on the families and, that are in town to 
be smart and not send your kids to school if they're starting to show any type of symptom that we keep sending out in that letter on a regular basis. <laughs> you had some data <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure we've heard from every everyone that have, wants an opportunity to share some thoughts. I, I just had one thing um, on the back end of that. I'm also in favor of staying as long as we can safely. Trying to make it to the 18th sounds great. Um, I do think, though, if we had two schools that shut down, I don't think I lay quite that way, only because in my brain I say siblings. You know, it's not just those two schools. It's, it's you know, well, it's everybody else they're in contact with, but the siblings within the same household and then having it, um, you know, getting into the other schools. I feel like if it's just like little sprinklings of, of cases that are controlled, it's one thing, but I think if we actually had two schools shut down, to me that that kind of feels like a point where I think we would at least talk about it or consider it. I don't know if I'd feel safe about at that point saying, geez, let everybody else keep running with it just because, like I said, siblings. Yeah, it's true. That's reasonable. Well, what, how are you handling it now? If they're siblings, are they quarantining too? Yeah, they're yes. Different building? Yeah. Of a positive case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yes. So a school might shut down, a whole school might shut down if we had three cases and there could be a sibling in that school and a sibling in another school, but neither of them may have had exposure. They just happen, one of them happens to be shut down because Correct. they're in that building. Right. So I think, I think to answer your question is if, if it's a, if the positive case siblings have to quarantine, totally. but, that, but that classroom, that's quarantining because of that positive case. Yeah. Those no, siblings, no. those siblings don't have. To yeah, quarantine. they don't. Right, right. Because they're but secondary. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be all about timing and specifics, but we we should just be prepared either way. I think the other thing we also got to factor in is I think is once we go out and we said the last meeting a few weeks ago, yeah. whatever, that we don't want to play the flip flop game. Right. I think once we go out, if we yeah. can't make it to the 18th. Then we're out and we're out until. And that's the that's the question. Yeah. That's the other side of this question. Right. How long do you right. want it before after Christmas? I think if, yeah, typically yeah. we're going to be back on the fourth. That doesn't honestly seem realistic given. Well, well a lot the of places are going until Martin Luther. Yeah, we a lot of them are. So that's the date that keeps popping in my head too. Is the nineteenth. Yeah. That gives you two uh, because, after Christmas. Well, and that's the thing is we're going to see it. We potentially could see a jump the, not next week, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah next week. So that gives us that. That's going to kind of give us a little case study on what we could potentially see yeah. from our Christmas a mini, break. A mini version, right? right? Yeah. So can I we, mean, I don't want to sit there and see that, and before what, making a decision. That's, well, that's what I, I feel like we already we already did see that jump. We saw six cases in a compressed amount of time that we hadn't seen yet, but thankfully we didn't Correct. have to do all the close contact tracing. Yeah. So the jump happened, we just haven't had the impact of feeling it yet. Correct. So I think, and I think you're gonna see another one when you come to Christmas time, and it might might potentially be bigger because it's a of next course. period of time away. So for me, the goal would be to come back on the 19th, but I'd love to come back earlier. You know, if we don't see the jump that we are expecting to see bigger, Right. Yeah, so something to think about. When is the end of the semester? Uh, it's the, usually it's like that last, the 26th of January. Yeah, so I just would really beg people to consider seriously the, the fact that kids are going to be finishing that semester. If we are remote until the 19th, they will have a different level of access yeah. to teachers to catching up on work to finals to when you look at you know some of the upper levels you've got kids wrapping up AT, AP I mean these are well educationally the stakes are high and I do think that it's I think there'll be an impact if if they're out until a couple of days before their finals or even taking finals remotely like without I, I think we'll well there's some flexibility too Denise because you know we've done this in the past where we've actually extended the end of first semester for another week for that very reason to make sure that kids are getting the support they need um, so I mean I think we will have to talk about that as we 
get closer and see see what the impact is. Yeah, this is, we are so in flux right now. Like, mm-hmm. just we're watching it, and we just want we wanted to lay it all out so I that want, we could have the conversations. I want to follow that up though with the remote that we just dealt with was awesome compared to what we had in March. Yes, I thank I you for that. that. I think <laughs> that my you know I've got two those poor kids. high schoolers had to go to school for five days. I've got two younger <laughs> kids, and I've got an older kid. And nothing I heard, nothing. The only thing I heard from the older kid was, now i got to be here for every single day. Yeah. And I was like, They're like what the heck? That's it's what school. you're supposed to do. <laughs> it's cool, people. Uh, oh, yeah. but, my, but my younger kids, they were in school from 9.15 till 3, 4 o'clock every single day with a set schedule. And it was awesome. Like, I didn't really have to teach them. Yeah. I had to just make sure that, hey, it's you got to get online. Yeah. Hey, you got to get online and yeah. make sure they are focused. But I, I think... As a district, what we've changed in our remote learning aspect made it way better. Yeah. And I think that helps absorb these factors and when we have to go remote again. It was clear that the yellow 2.0 that just went out from the high school, the high school one, um, there's already a petition from the kids to stop it, so we know we did the right thing. <laughs> Too much work for? Uh, it's quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> Um, the other thing I'm really worried about is the special ed kids, yeah. the ones that have, um, yeah. they depend on their environment being consistent every day, and when we keep going back and forth like this. Well, would they come in still? Do, do some of yeah. them still come yes. in? Yeah. They, they come on a case, very, on an IEP by IEP right. basis. Okay. Very good. Well, and that actually that's another thing that you guys should know is that the high school is bringing in, on Wednesdays, they're bringing in um, younger, like, the next, some eighth and ninth graders, even tenth graders, who just need extra support. Oh, great. So that's been a great thing, and, and we're going to look at that for the um, sixth and seventh as well. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. We can't always do everything. We can't bring everybody back the way no. we want to, but at least we're going to focus on those kids that are really struggling the most. So, Linda, Rebecca, Lynn, how are you out there? <laughs> Does have any comments on this? No, I mean, I particularly, I kind of have the same feeling. I'd like for them to go as long as possible because the flip-flopping is taking an emotional toll. And I understand that the health is important, but the consistency and the regimen also helps with the mental health. Yeah. But if, but like, you know, you said, if, if two schools start shutting down, boy, you really have to take a second look about how long. So... You know, that's where I am, as, as I think we should go as long as possible and see where the numbers go. I mean, we can always call a meeting and, and pull it if we needed to. Did we, the last meeting, you're going to check with the, our, our uh, attorney to see whether or not it's the school board that needs to make that decision, or are you have to make that decision of going remote without the state telling us to go remote? Or a meeting. It was to, if we could have an emergency meeting. Yeah. 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 Did you, you we haven't we that? haven't heard back from that yet okay. on that yet. So. Well, I would lean in favor. I agree with Estrita, and I would lean in favor of planning to shut down on the 18th or or whatever because it's just so predictable. I mean, from other places and other holidays and it's just such a huge traditional holiday and you know people are going to get together even when they're told not to and people just can't you know it's just human habit they can't stop themselves even though they know it's they're told it's going to make people it's going to kill people people i mean it's really scary the number of people who are dying every day maybe the kids aren't getting sick but they may be passing it on to somebody else who does. So, you know, that's my two cents, whatever. Lynn, do you have any thoughts or anything you want to add? We can't hear you. Oh, what's going on? Right Rebecca seems right. to be backwards. Right. Lynn, we can't hear you. Like it says she's... Try and mute yourself. It... 
Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it looks like you're unmuted, but it's not working. We can't yeah, hear you. What volume? Is your volume up? Our microphone might, might not be on. Mm. You can sign us. <laughs> <laughs> Right, really big on paper. Uh, <laughs> nope. Nothing. No, no, we got nothing, nothing on you, Lynn. Hmm. Amy, I have a question. Um, do you have any indication from the CDC? Uh, you know, I don't want to get too optimistic here, but when a vaccine is available, are teachers considered? Like a priority? It doesn't sound, it sounds like it's going to be um, just select hospital staff will be the first in the okay. line. So like not even your staff? No. Okay. okay. I'll go back It'll to not be being on the Everybody probably gets the vaccine or before essential aspects in the school side get it, it'll probably be the end of the school year. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Do we need to make any decisions tonight? We just wanted your thoughts and stuff. And, uh, I think if we, I think as far as making a decision, um, I would, I would like the default to be in the hands of you guys or you Audra the to you know to make a recommendation and if we can pull together um you know an emergency meeting that would be great but I feel like as a board it like I know that last time you had a half an hour an hour to make a lot of rapid fire decisions in order for things to kind of be able to happen um, I I feel like if we can do if you guys can do the best possible attempt yeah. at early communication, yeah. um, and if there is a decision that we have to make, then obviously we need to figure out how to do an emergency meeting. But I I feel like the we have a plan in place, and if we get to whatever the th number of cases or. Um, I feel like you guys need to be able to make that decision, you know. And that the telephone it, call is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. About that works for your telephone, and then you know you got to go check your okay. email something. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Something's up. Okay. Good. But if if people if board members are at work or not seeing that, I don't feel like you guys. I don't feel like we should wait because we aren't checking our emails or something. If if a decision has to be made you know, that quickly, but obviously every attempt, but that's, again, that's, that's, I'm just one. I don't know if everyone else it, kind of agrees with that, it, but. Audra, if you could just um, like point out the reason um, that we have to close because of the number of cases. Okay. I think that puts parents more, okay, this is what happened. Yeah. Okay. And we can yeah. deal with that. Sure. Maybe if, um, okay. I think sometimes I think, oh, well, they just, they were nervous, so they decided to shut okay. down early. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think it's helpful to have the the um, facts. Okay. So that was one of the biggest questions that I've had to answer since we yeah. had this. Why do we go remote? Yeah. Why do we go remote? Yeah. Me too. And at first, I didn't have an answer until we had that meeting, and mm -hmm. then it was well, okay. our staff and was an issue. Oh, but we right. sent the letter. You sent the right stuff out, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did we? It doesn't feel like we have any. Um, it feels like we still need to talk a little bit about January. Yeah. Do we want to wait till the 17th? I mean, our next meeting is December 17th. Mm -hmm. Do or do we want to just see how this next a little bit of time? I December. mean, because we want to be able to tell kids and staff. Right. Right. We do. We By the we'd like to have a plan. What we're going to yeah. do. Yeah. Right. right. We could. I mean, we could have. We could schedule an emergency meeting. Well, next week. Next week. Well, this is the agenda. A weekly meeting. Well, no, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, can we, we can do it to next week instead mm -hmm. of the week after. We can do a virtual meeting next week. And yeah, we virtual. Mm -hmm. My, again, just one. My vote would be to plan to be out remote for one week after that first week in January with, and then yeah, revisit to add a second week 
Okay. Um, but I, I don't think we need to revisit. I wouldn't wait until January to revisit. Um, but I, I know that there's a lot of push to just automatically be out until the middle of January. I just personally am having a hard time wrapping my head around that. But Well, and the other part of that is if you're going somewhere for Christmas, so you go the 25th, 26th, yeah. whatever, and you know you have to be back at school on the 4th, you don't stay as long. Yeah. If they know they're going to have till the right middle of January, they're going right. to be gone longer to more places. That's Yeah, that's true. That's possible. Mm -hmm. So, and... Uh, testing is like if you yeah, I mean, kids if you do travel and you get tested, does that is that okay? Like, is that enough, or or do we still have that fourteen day window regardless of testing? The the guidelines for the state still haven't changed. It's um, test or quarantine within the seventy two hours of returning to Maine. So test or quarantine. Test or quarantine. Meaning, if you get a negative test. You after can, 72 hours of being back. After 72 hours. You can get it 72 hours prior. Say, say that again? You can get it, say, you can get it 72 hours, within 72 hours of returning to the state of Maine. Okay, so I get a test, even if it's negative, I've got 72 hours after that. To get to Maine. To get what? To get to Maine. So say you're in Florida, you can test in Florida. Oh, oh okay. Maine. It makes no sense, but that's the rule. It's, because you could so I, on, okay, I so say I get back and I test on January 1st. Yep. What does that mean? I'm a student. What does that mean for me as a student? Do I still have to quarantine for two weeks even though I have a negative test? No. Okay. So we want to have a meeting next week. That will give us more information about what's happening next week yep. to talk about January. Does that? I think we. I think we got to start having weekly meetings until we get through these holidays. Okay. To figure out where we're going to go with the school. We can okay. do that. So Thursday does that? The seven o'clock time frame because we've got other meetings right before mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Okay. Does Thursday work for our meeting? None of us ever schedule anything. Okay. Else on <laughs> <Thursdays>. <laughs> no. no. Seven o'clock. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I mean, kids do come back to school on the fourth, even if they're not physically present. So it's just remote. So they, they could be remote from Florida. They could be. They could be they yeah. could Some be. people did that. Some last people year. did that. Some people have done it this year. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So it's not that I'm trying to keep going at it, but <laughs> but you are. Did we? I am because I want to make sure I'm clear in case I need to communicate something out. So, are did we say? if we can make it to December 18th. Like we're going, December 18th is our target. Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't think we so, do the 21st or the 22nd. Okay, so I, so I can send, okay. So, well, I'll send, so do we have two remote days of learning? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. remote days, yeah. So I will send something out tomorrow to families with that information so they can plan ahead for that. Okay. And and with the do clear- we have, I guess, well, do we even have to go remote on the 21st or 22nd? Yes. So I think so. I yeah, but I don't know if we're required to. Well, they, they've they really know. waived the... They waived the... I they, don't know. They've waived the... The kids... Are, are, are they going to be productive days is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I hear you. Right? Well, I mean, usually I know when I was in school, the two days, when we went in on the two days before the Christmas break, <laughs> we went in our pajamas and watched movies most of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I, we don't do that anymore. We work really hard at not doing that. Wow, you um, never did it. No. no. I well, I think I think we can. I think we should have school because the other piece is, is it, it just gives some kids an opportunity to keep the routine going, keep yeah. things going, and yeah. you know, it, it, it'll it'll people can make their decisions, and that's you know, on their own. But I think we should keep our keep our schedule. I agree. Okay. All right. Okay. Are you guys comfortable with that? A aiming for the 18th, if we yes. can get there, and if we need to adjust before then. Yeah. yeah. We want our, we want to keep kids in school as long as we can. There's no question. It's just whether or not it's eventually going to be feasible. We right. just don't know that yet. And I even think, like what Stephanie said, that even if it is two schools, let's look at which schools they are, because if it's yeah, if it's a Berwick thing, then it's. 
you know, that's a different yeah. thing than if it's a Lebanon yeah. school and, and, high school and North Berwick. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. depends on which schools you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Evaluate your data. <laughs> I that? have data. I have a lot of data. <laughs> um, do you? I can run through. Some. So what we did is we just collected some information from the buildings this morning, and we asked a couple of questions just from um, how many students are quarantining, whether that be because they travel to a state that, or or because of symptoms. Um, how many families have asked for remote since the beginning of this week or since like Friday? Um, how many staff are quarantining primarily because of travel or something um, related to that or childcare? Um, and then how many staff have raised concerns to building admin or asked questions um, with about concerns? So I'll just, I'm just gonna, I didn't have time to, put it in a document, but um, MHA, there's one student quarantining. There's two students who um, are going to be remote until um, after, in January, they're coming back from remote. One staff is quarantining due to a childcare issue, and then four staff just reached out with some clarifying questions for this week. Food service, we have no staff quarantining and no known exposures for that. North Berwick had three students quarantining, three families requesting remote. And what that means at the elementary level, it's so much easier at the, at the high school level. But at the elementary level, what, that, what is happening is that we're treating that similar to like if a student is out sick. So they're getting um, a mixture of some schoolwork assigned by the teacher, but also some of their technology things that they're doing on what we practiced just recently. But it's not a full classroom experience. No, no. Um, one staff member had quarantined but is back, and then five or six staff members reached out with um, not concerns for the building, but but um, just like what's going on in the town, how are things going, and you know, just more for a pulse of, of what's going on that way. So at Knowlton School, uh, seven students are quarantining because of travel. Two families have requested remote. Um, two staff are quarantining. No concerns have been raised about coming back. Noble High School, 18 students are quarantining. 22 uh, have requested remote. And again, that's a really easy yeah. flip. Um, five staff are quarantining and there were about four concerns, four questions or concerns from staff. Do you have a sense of what the nature of the concerns or questions are? I know some of it is, um, some of them have been, could you just reinforce again all the safety protocols yeah. for the students yeah. and the sure staff again? Yeah. 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 Uh, at the 4-5 building, seven students are quarantining, five families have asked for remote, zero staff are quarantining, and there were four questions or concerns. Uh, and Huzzy, um, six students are quarantining, three have requested full remote, families have requested full remote, three quarant staff are quarantining, um, and there haven't, there weren't questions or concerns other than wondering what, what our process is, like what we're doing, how long we're going to go. Um, so that is that. Transportation, uh, I didn't get numbers. No, not yet. You have Lebanon yet, have you? Lebanon. I don't think I wrote that. I've got it. Do okay. you have it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I can read that. Um, Good. Let's see. Three students out for the week. One is in a... That's personally identifiable, so we'll leave that. She's got a, an, an event coming up, and she doesn't want to catch it at school, so she's staying out. Nine students out because of travel or exposure circumstances or waiting for test results. Um, three families have requested remote since af to, until after Christmas. One actually came back, so that's good. Um, three staff out impacted by daycare closure and three staff home quarantining with positive family members are waiting for test results. Um, and no staff reaching out to ask about being concerned about returning after Thanksgiving. So all of, most of these that are quarantined, are they positive quarantines or are they travel quarantines? Are we- Combination. Yeah. Close contact. Close yeah. contact quarantine. Yeah. 
Yeah, and those are not any... counting towards our numbers. Okay. We, no. we don't have any that any classes or no. any that no. we don't have any classes. Or... Our allocations are not in school. But not closed. Right. Right. So our biggest issue is the height right now, number wise. What are our biggest are, it's the high school with pull that up. And this is active cases that were got the spinning wheel of death. Okay. Oh gosh. This happened to me earlier today too. This is not good. You were going to mention transportation next, so why don't you go to so the last question? So transportation, I didn't get the same kind of breakdown, but um, what I did get is that two of the bus drivers have been out for other issues, and they're coming back um, next week. So that that's really really helpful. And this week they've had very good attendance with the bus drivers. That's what I received for information. We do have one transportation employee potential potential right. getting tested. Okay. I have a question if you're still looking. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to come into it. Um, but. The, do we, we had said that at the end of the semester, um, families would have the option again of moving remote or in person. <laughs> What's your window in advance of that to ask and... Um, like what's the what does that process look like? We're, We're talking sorry. about that on Wednesday. Yeah. With you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's. it's uh, mm -hmm. I don't really want to say it out loud. Okay. <laughs> like I don't. I'm not ready to like say, hey, anybody wants to. Yeah. Come yeah. on out because well, our remote teams are pretty full. Yeah. I have yeah. a question about that too because some of the class sizes are pretty large. I think for the, the remote. remote. Yeah. yeah. The, especially yeah. the elementary. Yeah. And do they? Are we giving or we did we say we were going to provide them with an ed tech? They have ed tech support, yeah. but it's not like in conjunction with the class that's going on right at that time. Uh -huh. There's some pullout, you know, like some of the students are meeting yeah. with the ed tech, you know, in a, in a different room, so to speak. But they don't have one designated ed tech that's there to help that particular class. No, they're working more with the students. Like if the student has an IEP, the mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. education teacher will um, work with that student. Yeah. So that's how that's running. Yeah. And is that because we don't have enough ed techs? Otherwise, would we do it differently? Or I think we certainly, if we felt that the classes needed to be smaller, we certainly would have split, and we're right on the cusp of that. Mm -hmm. And this may tip us yeah, over that's a little bit. Just, just thinking. Yeah. 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 Um, but right now, I mean, we're doing a lot of check-ins with the teachers, and in the beginning, it was like, okay, our numbers are bigger than some of the the class the classes yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. But I think they're in a really good rhythm right now. Not that they wouldn't welcome a smaller size, sure. Sure. but um, I think it's working, and with the support that is help, you know, working with the the students or taking them into a different room right now. I think that that's we haven't heard any. We haven't heard the the kind of concern as we did in the in the beginning when it was like okay this number is different than yeah. the the in person number mm -hmm. so I've got our numbers you got now. It. yep so at the high school we've got two active cases can you speak up a little okay. bit high school we have two active cases middle school none and when I say active I mean it's been fourteen days. Since, within the 14 since they've popped up so after 14 days i cross them off and and these were positive tests positive okay yes um, at the four or five building we've got two eric knowlton two huzzy zero north Berwick, zero lebanon zero hansen zero mha zero and these include the ones that didn't, the ones that we just got notified of yesterday. Yes, so these are that. where they're originating. The previous ones, like I said, are just kind of like, I crossed them off our list. Like I'm keeping the live ones so that when we, I can look and say how many in the last 14 days are we looking at per building. So are there any, um, I didn't, 
tally along mentally, but mm-hmm. are there any schools that are that are sort of on your watch list right now? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of stuff out in the wings right now. Okay. Families with parents positive, kids awaiting. Yeah. Um, people so, who have been at so Thanksgiving it, yeah. and someone ends up positive. So maybe people quarantining but don't have that positive case right. yet. Okay. But have those been in school this week? Fresh this week, there's been a couple, yes, that we're waiting on that we would have to act on. And we won't know yet. You're waiting on the test results? Test, yeah. In some of the cases, the it's not even the appropriate time that they would get tested past the five to seven days post-exposure. So they wait till that date-ish. Um, and then get tested, and then with the amount of time it's taking for the turnaround for the testing, and the students and staff. Yep. So it's just like I said before, bracing for impact. It's coming. We just don't know how hard and how quick. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. Do you guys have all the information or decisions you need from the board tonight? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so was was what you just went through? Were those our updates? Was that the update agenda item? I. It started it. Okay. <laughs> we can go through some other things like school nutrition. I can speak to a little bit more. Okay. Um, and then we wanted to just touch base on athletics okay. quickly. So, uh, basic. So I actually will start with attendance because we do try to go through that. Um, so this is the this week attendance. Uh, we saw a little lower at the middle school. So they were running, their lowest day was 87.8% attendance. Their highest day was 97% attendance. Um, the other schools, Lebanon Elementary, they their lowest was 86% attendance. Their highest was 90. Um, and then the other schools were running in the, the low 90s. Let me see. Yep. Um, yes. So it's pretty, other than that dip at the middle school, it's been pretty consistent in the, in the 90s. And that uh, includes the remote. And I did check, Nancy, as you, your question about last time about the, the remote and the absences. As I look through the, just we extrapolated just the attendance for the students that are remote. And there seems to, it, it mirrors what we see in the classroom, that there are almost every grade level class, and there are about two sections at each grade level at the elementary level, there are about two children that we're worried about with attendance. And that is mirrored what we see historically in the classroom every year. We see two to, I'm two to three. I'm also worried about, because we, like you were saying, it was like they take attendance in the right. after morning meeting, whatever mm-hmm. they call mm-hmm. it now. Um, but then they have, for, like we were talking about, some kids are pulled up or whatever. Right. And sometimes the kids aren't going to that, those. That was, okay. So, That's but what, I mean, yeah. you've already taken attendance. So right. It's like, yeah. you can't track that. Right. Right. So that is the attendance piece. And then and, and going forward, the middle and high schoolers or high school are going to be required to do a check-in of some sort on the Thursday, Friday. Will that yes. be part of attendance? That is part of their attendance. That's considered part of their attendance. Okay. Yes. That'll be interesting. Yes. After interesting. when did they start that? Right before I Thursday? believe right before well. Let me think about it because we were going to start it and then we went remote. Yeah. So I'm not. Did we 100% start? So that? you probably didn't actually. If right, they, were, think they had we classes those I, days. I don't right. think we did. Right. So today maybe. Right. So today. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that'll be interesting after to a see. couple weeks of that to see. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Right. Hmm. And then so school nutrition. All of the snow day packs have been uh, distributed to families. We did hear today an update that moving ahead and all those all those packages delivered our grandfather now but moving ahead 
that we can no longer provide inclement weather packet or kits, or she, Abby called them kits, yeah. um, to anyone who is already getting multiple meals per week, hmm. which is very interesting. So that that means like for our kiddos that are like at the high school, if they have, they're in one day, say if it's a senior, they're yeah. in one day, they have, have can get four days of, of some lunch and then they're not going to be able to get a snow day pack because we're already sending home multiple packs of things so do we are we tracking which kids those are oh yeah we, we have yeah, all the info yeah, yeah. yeah. and but it's and just, everything's been grandfathered right now yeah. and we have yeah. we have some out to for three snow days yeah so we're so, going and so we're not going to have any more than three snow days right right <laughs> <laughs> and then transportation we have two drivers that are coming back which is which good. is really good um, there is an advertisement out for drivers and an advertisement out for uh, bus monitors. And um, we have eight monitors and Brenda's rotating them through the buses. And that seems to be working really well. Let's see, athletics. Are, are they yeah. a question about buses? Um, do we feel like the compliance, like seating and masks and everything are pretty good on the buses? Yes, I think the problem that we're going to start to have is, um, and I, Amy, I think you can speak yeah. to this. Yes, yeah. so it was clarified in our um, state level school nurse meeting yesterday, um, the window, open window situation, because yeah. having open windows in winter in Maine um, is an issue. So the guidance is, it's not a mandate, the CDC is not saying the windows need to be open, but the guidance is two front windows, one on each side, completely down, two windows in the back on each side, completely down. So that's four completely open windows would buy us only having to quarantine around the infected individual. Instead if, of the whole bus. If, all, if we can provide assigned seating and four windows down, it would just be those individuals around the close contact, as opposed to any variation between it would be the whole bus. So, I don't and what is it now? What is it currently? The one whole of, bus? One I thought it was two windows. windows. One, yeah, one the but the, it actually it says two windows in here, but the lady from the CDC was on this meeting and she specifically said two in the front, two in the back. So we're not gonna make our kids uncomfortable wet Wow. On um, their hour long there. drive. There's only like six windows. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so so, I have two in the front, right. two in the back. So it's, it's not awesome. a mandate. That's just a guideline in order to quarantine and so what several we, students compared to a whole bus, which our whole bus is not full, anyways. So, so are we thinking we're going to not do the open windows and take the chance of quarantining the bus? I, Probably. I would, especially on those, those very cold yeah. days. Cold and days. if it, you know, snow and hours. rain, it's yeah. just not feasible. It's not going to torture the. Here, yeah, we won't get you COVID, but yeah. you are going to get pneumonia. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm thinking about <laughs> the driver too. The, like it's different down there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. And athletics, there um, we are going to begin conditioning remotely next week. So the week of December seventh. Um, so, so tomorrow we are also supposed to be getting a color coding for the county. Um, yellow still, if if the county's yellow, that still means red for athletics, which is why we said December seventh they can begin. That's what the state um, is saying. So we are starting with a check, just a coach checking in with, with anybody that signed up for the team to do activities, not in school. So it's, it's on their time, walking the dog, running with the dog, how's school going, yeah. just kind of a check in, how are things going, you know, do some sit ups at home. That and this is for all sports. We have, there's no, there are no sports that have, we've said absolutely not, not going to happen. Correct. Wrestling has been pushed out, but 2022. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think February. Yeah. 20, it's, yeah. And you're probably safe with that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so the deadline to sign up for winter athletics is Monday, right? The seventh. I didn't think right. That. Yeah. Right. Seven, eight, yeah. Um, what are we doing with our coaches and stipends and all that stuff? Our, well, 
we have a scale for them so that if if we're just if they are if we're yellow the whole season and they cannot participate in competition then they get us a, a certain amount like 25 percent then if we go green as a county and we start competitions that's prorated for their for that time so it's it's more of a specific and they all know that going they, they had a meeting last they night, last night. Yeah, they, we, we, we're issuing we contracts the information that should be sent to them yeah. and we, we're doing contracts and we're gonna, not, in good faith we're going to hope that our coaches can connect with kids yeah it's not just head coaches and all, no, it's all everybody. coaches are getting that the only thing that we haven't done it's all of the high school coaches the middle school season has already been pushed back until January, January 11th, I think. Oh, I thought so, they were going to do any middle school at all. I don't know if they're doing they, I know. I think they just, they kind of kicked the can a lot <laughs> lately. So I think that's what they're doing, kicking it down the roads. But mm -hmm. yeah, so it's for everybody at a certain rate for the, um, it's like 25% for the first, it, for just checking in. Right. And then after that, it's like, if we get to some weeks in, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll get more based on that. Yeah, that's why that was good. I think it was well received. I do too. Aaron said mm -hmm. he thought it was well received. So, and that's that's the, those are those updates. Okay. All right. Employment. We do have a resignation, or, or I should say, retirement. retirement. Uh, Susan Macri, special oh. ed director. Uh, yeah. We'll be retiring June 30th, 2020, 2021. In her letter, to, she sent an email out to the administrative team today and just wrote January, uh, Ju June 30th, 2022. Yeah. And so somebody's like, <laughs> we're <"That's> excellent. Excellent. <laughs> So, but no, it is effective this, this um, June. Yeah. So this, she wrote a really yeah, nice letter. She did. Well, she she's, did. yeah. 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 done a remarkable job. She has she done has a remarkable done a job. job. Yeah, yeah. 50 years, she said, she had a story about how what really um, compelled her to go into special education. So at the end of the letter, it just said, so this is the 50 years of, of education because she made that decision when she was very young yeah. that she was going to. She was, um, I think, 12. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she made it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so that is the only um, employment piece update that we have, and that does require us. Yes. So. Somebody want a motion to Okay. I'll second it. All right. Um, Travis? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Estrita? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Linda? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Oh, there we go. We got you. Yes. Poor thing. She's been silenced for the whole minute. It was the cat. It was the cat. Superintendent report. I don't have anything. I think we've covered quite a bit. I have one question. Sure. Um, what became of the meeting um, with the SRTC uh, and the kids you know, attending? I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 So the SRTC, we did talk about the fact that if there's a school, a high school that's identified as an outbreak, that, it, that we're not sending to SRTC. But if we close um, without concern of cases in that building, in that high school, that we could talk to SRTC to see if they could attend, our kiddos could attend. What happened with us is we had these cases that were cropping in, so we were prudent and did not send students. But right now, our students are not participating in SRTC. Well, Last week, right? It was the right, they, they're week. going back. They the seventh. They, they come back at the seventh. So the SRTC is out now. Yes. Yes. Out the oh, yes. And they'll yeah. be back in on Monday. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. So, so really, it's it's pulling. Yes. It's all very different. different. You're going to have more right. Yeah. Right. Cases. Yeah. Yeah. So. What, what 
those are. Um, do you want to? Thank you. I appreciate sure. that. That's, that's the answer I expected. Let's uh, open them up. That's what Steve would have given us for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> so in here, in the technology that's coming for all of our teachers. Oh. So it doesn't have. Where is it? They're going to have uh, an iPad. Oh. And a new mask. Oh. As well as things like helpful things like ear, you oh. know, canceling things. Oh, there's a few other things. And Mr. Oh, a new your own little mouse, as I always said. So my friend Chris Russo said, remind me to tell the board that they're gonna get new MacBooks. <laughs> <laughs> so the Chromes are gonna go. Huh? I like Apple. Oh, man. Oh, there's a Actually, when Rebecca was having some noise things, he's like, he's like, remind me about the, um, for the board so that they can update their computers as well. So, because your Chrome's, you know, they get noble, right? Yeah, I noticed my plug my Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all the teachers are getting these little teachers, techs, everybody. That's and amazing. Everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was part of the, the Sierra funds that we got, you know, the emergency relief funds that came through. Whoa. Yeah. And, this, you know. Well, it's it, what it helps is that I mean, these all those guys, the, the little one, the. They will be like this one. Yeah. Amazing. A MacBook Air. Yeah. This isn't one of them, but. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it was, it should, again, it'll take that next level up for the remote learning so that the synchronous nice. stuff can happen. Yeah. They're in the buildings right now, setting up rooms. Mm -hmm. to be more like just the sound quality is way better and just all of that stuff so it's two rooms in a two rooms in the evening yes. that they're doing yeah. wow. and going through so chris was saying that he you know he doesn't know who's going to get what room they're in that night but the next morning people are like clamoring at him to say i don't know how to use this stuff because <laughs> yeah. it just showed up um yeah. and did all the did the equipment come in for the little kids for the um the kindergartners i still think it did i think so I yeah mm -hmm. where are you chris did it come in there I'm he here. Is. can you hear me yeah. <laughs> um we're still waiting on a large order of the regular kind of entry level ipad those got seemed the demand for those was super high so we got a first batch but we never got our second batch um and then we're still going back and forth with the vendor on the Chromebooks, trying to push them to give us give us a date. You know, <laughs> we're we're holding on as best we can with uh, the student devices that we have out there. Um, folks are being really good about, you know, they're putting in tickets saying, you know, it doesn't work unless it's plugged in, and we're saying, well, can you keep it plugged in <laughs> and <laughs> just yeah. hang on. Um, <laughs> Last week on your agenda was the disposal of the old teacher devices, but we scratched that. And we, I, now that we have the teacher MacBooks in and we're going to be get distributing those, I'm going to pull the teacher Chromebooks in and give those out to some upperclassmen, okay. um, you know, and just free up some spares for the, for the younger kids. So um, we're making do on that front. But I think with what we've got in for the staff, uh, puts us in amazing position for the next bunch of years. Um, and then when we get our student stuff, we'll be in awesome shape. Um, so, yeah. And we just got our Max configured today so we can literally hand them to teachers and they can sign in and it gets all the software it needs and the printing and the um, all the settings. So we're getting... We're getting ready to send that email to staff pretty soon about when to come pick theirs up. And you heard me. I promised the board that you would replace their <laughs> I did. I did. But poor Lynn was having trouble with her mic. I was feeling bad. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Right. Sure. Um, so you said that we're not right with that agenda item that went away. We're not planning on trying to do the disbursement of those extra computers. So we don't have the extra computers right now. <laughs> right, right now, the the words extra and computer don't go next to each other in a sentence. Um, <laughs> we've, you know, as soon as we hand out the staff devices, we'll collect their Chromebook and immediately start issue. We have a list of kids who have various issues with their current device that we're going to, that'll be our first list of people to call in and swap out for this, uh, the incoming staff devices. 
Yeah, I, the correct word I meant to say was the disposing of that. <laughs> we're, we're not disposing of anything right now. No. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Any others from anyone on the board or? And do we have any other public input? The nice thing, I know. I love it. Go. Jared sent me um, something that she posted on. Uh, I guess it's a site for uh, families of uh, uh, SAB sixty. Oh, yeah. very oh, yes, there very is. Well, I'm not on it, but Good. she sent me this, Good. and because she said how thankful she was for MSAD sixty and what a wonderful district we are, and um, eleven and fifth grade teachers. Um, Ms. Crossman, Mr. Ranger, mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Ricard, and Mrs. Whitney mm -hmm. sent a lovely letter to the, the kids and parents. Oh, nice. And it meant a lot. So I, I just thought there was one little simple thing that yeah. I did that really um, spread a lot of um, joy to, to many families. So, Super. Very That's awesome. Well done. Good. Good. I'll let them know. Thank you. Awesome. All right, let's see. And I think the ex just the executive session is going to be for administration administrator contract, not yeah. teacher contract. Yeah. Okay. Was what it said. Okay, so can someone? We, we need a motion to go into an executive session. MS MRSA four hundred five six D labor contract discussions for action. I'll make that motion. <clears throat> um, just and we just need to. Let the live stream know okay. that we are closing out our regular meeting. No further regular business will be done. Our board members need to hop off and then hop back into the executive session. And Chris, you can shut us down. Well, and do I just need to do uh, a roll call? Oh, yeah. I'll second it. Okay. And then Travis. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Joanne. Yes. Nancy. Yep. Estrada. Yep. Stephanie. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Linda? Yes. Oh, that was Lynn, but in the wrong one. <laughs> uh, Lynn? Yes. <laughs>